As of July 24th, the U.S. has confirmed more than 4 million COVID-19 cases. That means one out of every hundred Americans has tested positive. Its death toll now tops 140,000, accounting for a fifth of the world's total. Experts have often warned infections could be around 10 times higher than what is reported, as many still go untraced. Why did America lose the war on COVID-19? Four letters, S-I-C-C, contempt of science. Although it is absurd, Americans are still debating about the validity of mask wearing. Some in the U.S. don't take social distancing seriously. And don't forget the series of astonishing instructions coming directly from the White House. Right, and then I see the disinfectant by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning. 99% of which are totally harmless. I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. Your vice president, who today was the only one at the Mayo Clinic seen not wearing a mask. I means insufficient leadership. In the process of responding to COVID-19, U.S. leadership seems to be doing the opposite. Typically, that will go away in April. It'll go away. It will disappear. It'll go away. It will go away. It's going to go away. Over a million. And two million cases. Three million COVID cases and counting. Of course, the U.S remains the world leader in the pandemic. What? It has replaced it with repeated misinformation. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. Continuously blaming others. Chinese virus. The Chinese virus. It's a question of holding China account. And making political calculations for the election. President Trump backed their calls. In a series of tweets, he exclaimed, liberate Minnesota, Michigan, and Virginia. The second C stands for cleavage of society. Any attempt to contain COVID-19 in the U.S. will have to address its potential spread in low-income communities of color to protect the lives of people in those communities. As of July 8th, among all the deaths of COVID-19, 23% of them were African Americans. However, African Americans only make up 13.4% of the U.S. population. In some areas of the country, the disparity has been even more striking. To make things worse, Black Lives Matter protests have spread across America since the end of May. S stands for system flaws. America's failed response to COVID-19 is largely a failure of its own system. First. The political decentralization system in the United States has become a burden in epidemic prevention. On one hand, the federal government and the states compete for medical supplies such as masks and ventilators in the market. On the other hand, backpassing and throw it over the wall are games they like to play. Second, over the past few decades, Republicans and Democrats have become increasingly geographically divided. Democrats tend to do best in the nation's urban areas, while Republicans find their strongest support in more rural areas. However, in the U.S. Congress, every state gets the same two senators, regardless of their population size. This Senate map had particularly negative consequences over the past several months because COVID-19 hit Americans' urban population centers first and hardest. In early March, for example, as the virus was spreading, the first 15 U.S. states to report cases accounted for 56% of America's population, but only 30% of America's senators. This explains why the Senate was initially slow to act. Finally, the power of corporations has been translated into political power with disastrous effects to people's lives. The total money spent on lobbying Congress and federal agencies rose from 1.45 billion US dollars in 1998 to 3.47 billion US dollars in 2019. Given corporations' growing clout with policymakers, it is hardly shocking that business groups were able to convince the Trump administration to delay and scale back the use of Defense Production Act. It is a tragedy that the US government has lost the war against COVID-19 and the American people are suffering because of it.